The Conjuring, a real-life Annabelle doll. Fans of cinema's The Conjuring series are familiar with the work of real-life paranormal investigators, Ed, and Lorraine Warren. The Warrens founded the New England Society for Psychic Research, as well as the Warrens Occult Museum, in Monroe, Connecticut. Paranormal enthusiasts can visit the largest array of obscure and haunted artifacts. The Warren strongly believed that some of these items may still possess evil. The most famous artifact at the Warren's Occult Museum is the actual doll, that the Annabelle movies are based upon. Let's dive into this doll's creepy past and the stories connected to her. The real-life Annabelle doll's story begins in 1970. One thing to remember, Annabelle was bought second-hand from a hobby store. A 28-year-old nurse, named Donna, received the doll from her mother as a birthday gift. She was living with her friend Angie. Donna was delighted with the gift. At first. But the conjuring doll quickly became a source of great fear for the girls. Annabelle made only very small movements to begin with, that could be put down to Donna for example, ending up on the floor instead of on the chair. The Annabelle doll story quickly became more sinister. Soon, they started to find notes around their apartment. The strange thing was that, the notes were written on parchment paper, and neither of the two girls had ever used parchment paper before. The notes said various things, but most commonly, they said things like, Help, Lou, and Help, Us. Lou was Donna's roommate Angie's fiancé and had been staying with them. Angie and Lou were spending some time together, when they heard movement in Donna's room, but she wasn't at home. They were frozen in fear. At first they were concerned about an intruder, but they quickly realized, that the movement was in fact Annabelle. Lou took a look inside Donna's room, and there was no one inside. Although the doll was sitting on a chair instead of sitting on the bed, where she should have been. He moved forwards toward Annabelle and a feeling crept over him, that creepy feeling you get where something is terribly wrong. He felt a terrible pain on his chest, and realized that there was a series of claw marks, raking marks like someone had leapt at him and roughly scratched him. No one was in the room and so he knew that the marks must have come from Annabelle. What was stranger about these scratches is that they healed straight away, and within just two days, there was no trace of them at all. Finally, Annabelle, was found with blood on her hands. Donna came home from work one day, and found the doll in her usual spot on her bed, but unfortunately, she had literal blood on her hands. It seemed almost like the blood, or the red liquid, whatever it was, was coming from the doll itself. That was it. It was time for the girls to call in some help in the form of a medium, to find out just what was going on with this doll before things got worse. A priest was called into the apartment along with the warrants and it was discovered that Annabelle's main goal was to take possession of Donna's soul. Annabelle was a demon. She was attached to the doll. The Warrens said that demons don't possess items or things, instead, they possess people. The priest eventually exercised the apartment, and the Warrens took Annabelle away with them. Annabelle is still around today, residing in the locked glass case that the Warrens built to keep her from getting free and roaming around their house. There is a warning sign on the case, saying do not touch, as well as a cross. Some say that they see Annabelle moving around the case, waiting to get free. Make sure to subscribe for more world mystery videos.